good to see you today. It is April 26th. We are talking about David and Bathsheba today. We are in 2 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. And we're going to bring in one of the Psalms. Psalm 51 is also included in our daily reading. Uh, but anyway, in 2 Samuel, and we won't spend a whole lot of time overviewing this. Um, hopefully you're familiar with the account. As David was not where he should have been, David did not do what he should have done, and it's a sad, sad picture. As Uriah is going to die, Bathsheba is pregnant, she's going to have a child, and then that child is going to die. Chapter 12 is Nathan the prophet being sent by the Lord to David, and you have that whole encounter. Verse 15, as you see, is when the child is struck. The child did not die quickly. Seven days, I believe, is, yes, verse 18 on the seventh day. And then afterwards, we have the birth of Solomon as he comforts Bathsheba. Anyway, as we think about uh, so many lessons, just so many lessons that we could learn from the account, I'm going to leave it right about I'm going to leave it right about there. But as we think about David and what David did, and there, like I said, there's innumerable lessons to learn from the account. But very simply, what did David do? He repented. He turned from his sin, and it was more than just acknowledging his sin. Uh, sometimes you'll see other people acknowledge their sin. Judas acknowledged his sin. But there's a difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. And David had godly sorrow, and he turned from his sins. And that's what we should do as well. So David said to Nathan in verse 13, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, The Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. And that was the penalty for adultery. And so we think about David and how he stood by grace as we all stand by grace. That he was deserving of death, but that the Lord had put away his sin. But you do have the prophecy made that the child would die. But I want you to see as the child as the child passed as the innocent the innocent died rather than the guilty, as we think about that. In verse 19, it says, When David saw his serv that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. And you might notice what David did. Because in my mind I had always envisioned David that David got up and he ate. But that's not what the verse says. It says, So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord, and he worshipped. That's what David did. And as we, we learn from, as we learn from David, it's just an amazing thing, but it's what we have to do that David David very easily could have resented God. He very easily could have gone in the opposite direction of the house of the Lord. But that's not David. David had done something horrible, and his child was dead. And the first thing he does is, does is he gets up and he washes himself. He'd been laying on the ground, it says. So we might think about the reverence that he had for the Lord. He washes himself, he anoints himself, and he goes and he worships God. Goes and he worships God. And then it says that he went home. Then he went to his own house. And when he requested, they set food before him. And he ate. That he went on with his life. And sometimes people have trouble with that. They have trouble just getting on with their lives. David did, and I don't mean it flippantly, because I don't think David's life was flippant in any way. But as he mourned for his son, 
he goes and he worships, and then he goes to his own house. And he, at a certain time, when he requested, I'm not saying that he came home and immediately asked for food. When he requested, though, they set food before him, and they say, what's going on here? You fasted and wept for the child while the child was alive, but now the child's dead, and you you get up and you, you ask for food. And he says what he says. Who could tell whether the Lord would be gracious with me while the child was living? But now, now the child's dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. So he goes on. He goes on in hope. As you think about it, the child wasn't coming back, but David was confident that he would see the child again. I shall go to him. He goes on with his life. But now let's look over in the Psalms. In Psalm 51, which that is the psalm that he writes concerning this occasion. And it's a... We just don't have time to go through the whole thing. But one of the other things that David does is he says, Do not cast me away from your presence. There in verse 11, Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. And then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. That what David did as he went on with his life is he tried to teach others. He used what had happened to him, and he used God's word, and he wanted to teach others. As it says, I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted. What was David himself? David himself had transgressed. And as the Lord rebuked him through Nathan the prophet, he was turned back to the Lord. And that's what, Dave, that's, what had had, that's what had happened to David, and that's what David knew needed to happen for others. So he would do his part in trying to teach others. Hope this brief look into God's Word has been helpful for you. Appreciate you following along with us. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you join us for our next study in God's Word.